good morning and good Sunday. I am here to report to you the news that Sepulchre of the First One's tier of patch 9.2 of the game World of Warcraft is the most nerfed raid ever to exist in the game. Thank you and goodbye. No, 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 for real, for real though. The argument of today is another, after another, after another, after half of another, and then after another, a set of nerfs to Sepulchre of the First Ones. This one is perhaps one of the largest in scale and in scope overall. Uh, we have already seen some, some different approaches Blizzard had to have for this tier. As we see, they are removing the limitations of Cross Realm, even though the Alliance is not even close to getting their Hall of Fame to, to, to be reached. So that's already an, an admission, an admission of guilt of having the raid far too competitive or having your faction balance be far too bad. So the raid has also followed, has also been followed by a series of nerfs that we have checked over time. Initially it was okay, and then we saw the mega nerf to Alondrus. But okay, it was just Alondrus at the time, but after that the floodgates opened and we started seeing more and more nerfs. We have gotten at this point three successive nerfs to Anduin, we have gotten two to Laws of Dread, three to Rygelon, and now three to the Jailer as well. It's, it's tough, it's tough. So. Let's go and take a look what these nerfs are going to do to the raid because, you know, if according to my prophecy the next season goes live in 3 months, we are with 165 guilds killing the Jailer with 3 months left, we might have gotten, if it was unnerved, to something like 300 guilds only to defeat the Jailer before the next tier opens, which is very very short, a very short number, honestly. So. The first set of nerfs goes to Zymox, which is whatever. The Cypher Relic cast time is increased to 30 seconds on Mythic difficulty instead of 25. So now you have more time. You have more time to deal with the uh, platforms. Uh, Prototype Pantheon also gets a nerf. Imprinted safeguards reduce damage and healing taken by 35% instead of 50%. This is mostly a fuck up, a, a, a fail safe mechanism in case you mess your lines and you don't remove the shield of the adds. This should never happen, okay? But if, if it happens, it's not gonna be as bad to damage the adds anyways. So, okay, I guess. Lehuvim also gets a bunch of nerfs. Lehuvim gets 10% less health in all difficulties, just because as if the fight was hard to begin with. Protoform schematics also got their health reduced by 10% on all difficulties, so the, the adds get uh, reduced in HP. That Those are the set of nerfs to Lyubim. In case you think it was impossible, it actually is. We have more room for nerfs to Halondrus. Ephemeral Eruption's initial damage is reduced significantly in Mythic difficulty. This is yet another fail-safe mechanism. The Ephemeral Eruption is the explosion that happens if you manage to let one of the orbs reach Halondrus. If they reach, they blow up for 600,000 damage to the entire raid, basically it kills everyone. This damage reduced significantly makes me think they are turning it into into a non-wipe mechanic something that you can still recover from if one or two manage to squeeze through in alonjus the other nerf for the big robot crab is that light shutter beam increases the damage taken from light shutter beam by 300 percent in heroic difficulty instead of 500 percent this makes it a little bit easier for tank management again you're not supposed to get this uh, and eat this damage increase light shutter beam multiple times anyways so it's more of a fail safe mechanism rather than a natural mechanic becoming easier then we enter the bottom four or the last four of bosses which receive once again more nerves Anduin is the first in line so Anduin's health the monstrous soul's health in the intermission and Anduin's despair health in uh, ad phases basically all get their health reduced 5% for Anduin and for Monstrous Souls, and 10% for the Anduin's Despair. So across all difficulties from LFR to Mythic, their health has been reduced. Anduin's Hope movement, which is the guys, the NPCs you have to heal in the intermission downstairs phase, have their movement speed reduced in Heroic and Mythic, so now you have more time to heal them before they disappear. Remorseless Winter's damage is reduced by 10% and Hope Breaker damage is reduced by 15%. These are quite massive, they are quite some damage heavy abilities that go on for most of the fight and are quite nasty to deal with. 
another damage is reduced necrotic close cooldown is increased by 50 percent on all difficulties this was the nasty debuff and the nasty leap with debuff that the little ghouls were giving random players in the intermission phase it gets quite risky quite dangerous towards the end when you have multiple stacks going on uh, of dots going on multiple uh, raid members this gets nerfed as well after undoing surprisingly we get even more nerfs of lords of dread if you remember the last big round of nerfs targeted particularly undoing rigelon and the jailer but basically did nothing to lords of dread as they were already significantly easier than the other three bosses at the end of the raid instead this time around for whatever reason they still get hit by the nerf hammer so Lords of Dread gets Malganis and Quintessa, so the two bosses, 5% uh, less HP, just because, on all difficulties. Swarm of Decay and Swarm of Darkness, so the big, big, big AoE damage phase, get their damage done reduced by 7.5%, both of them. And now Ravenous Hunger is going to heal the Shadow, the, the add, for 13% of its health rather than 10%. This means, I think, that it's going to take two less casts, or, or three less casts, to get to full HP. I don't know, I suck at math off the top of my head, but still, it's gonna make it faster to get rid of it, TLDR. One of the, one, one of the major changes in terms of ease of playability of the fight is that Cloud of Carrion, so the green, the green circle you have to take on yourself with the dot, no longer, no longer disorients when jumping between players on heroic and mythic difficulty. So you can now pass it much more easily and much more smoothly without getting the player disoriented. And then, and even more of a joke, intermission, the, the Among Us phase, Infiltration of Dread, has its total duration increased by 10 seconds. So you have extra time to be able to target, identify the imposters and get rid of them. Now, after Lords of Dread, we get a reverse. The last time it was Lords of Dread to get no changes and Rigelon to get a bunch of them. This time around, it's Lords of Dread who got the changes and Rigelon only gets one. Rigelon's collapsing quasar field duration is now increased by 50% in Mythic difficulty. Now, this was already nerfed. This was already nerfed the last time where the quasar field, so the time your players had to enter the alternate dimension of this pool with the bombs went from 6 seconds to 8, now it goes from 8 to 12. So essentially from the original 6 seconds it has been doubled to be 12 seconds long, which is, which is gonna make it much easier for you to get your players to correctly enter the correct pool on the ground and not wipe the raid while they blow up with the bombs in the in the normal phase rather than in the in the downstairs in the alternate dimension phase but then we enter the last chunk of changes which is the more significant one for today it is the jailer so rune of compulsion's health absorb is reduced by 33 percent on normal and heroic and by 10 percent on mythic this is the rune that is going to turn your friends into bad guys Previously it was four of them, now it's gonna be three of them after the nerfs of last time, three of them and the amount of damage you have to do to them to break them is reduced by 10% in mythic difficulty. Then we have a couple of non-mythic changes, we have misery, so the big tank blaster with the soak required for your group is no longer going to knock you back in LFR, in normal and in heroic difficulty. So the positioning of your of yourself and of your group becomes much easier. You have much less trouble in getting knocked back in terrible positions because it's not knocking you back anymore. And then Decimator, which is the upgraded tank blaster ability uh, in the later phases, also no longer knocks you back in Raid Thunder and normal difficulty only. One of the main changes for Mythic is that the Diverted Life Shield no longer heals on Mythic difficulty. This is paired with a few other mythic only changes. Number one, World Crusher is going to spawn two less Bloods of Azeroth on mythic difficulty and World Shatterer is going to spawn one less Blood of Azeroth in mythic difficulty, closing it out together with phase four now being triggered at 15% of health of, of, of the jailer in mythic difficulty this is going to make it much easier to manage your group soaking in the later phases it's also going to make phase one easier because of world crusher it's going to make it easier also to transition at the end of the fight 
there were some ways to make this happen anyways thanks to the cheese around mind games of a discipline priest being usable on the jailer and, and basically bugging out his his own healing essentially this change is basically going to make what you wanted to do with the bug official but in return you are getting less bloods getting less bloods means yes you are taking less damage yes you have coordinate less your party that goes to soak however not getting the blood soaks also means you're not getting a damage increase the nine percent damage increase that you can get when you soak the bloods so it is still a nerf okay it is still a nerf in uh, the, the complexity and the mechanics required for you to do in the jailer fight but not as much as we have gotten on a few other bosses before and even and even the last round even the last round of the jailer nerf that happened just what two weeks ago was more meaningful than this one which is still significant in and of itself it is still going to make it much easier to manage of a fight again it's quite it's quite interesting the fact that this is definitely the raid that has received the most nerfs overall really a consistent set of murders happening particularly to the last bosses of the tier it's not often it's not often that, that, that we, you get so many nerfs on so many bosses over time so it's interesting it's interesting and good at the same time that we get a little bit more of an easier time because if you look at the number it has definitely been a much more challenging raid to go through to chew through so i'm happy with these changes i'm gonna be even happier if i manage to take down the jailer before the nerfs so I'm not gonna feel as bad as defeating the post 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 nerf version of the fight, but still. This is what we have for this Sunday. Let me guys know what you think about these nerfs. Perhaps you think they are too many and too much. Perhaps you think they're not enough. Perhaps you don't care because you don't raid to begin with. That being said, thank you guys for watching the video and for helping to grow the channel, which also includes liking and commenting on this video as well as obviously as usual subscribing to the channel this one being a raid centric video i'm going to allow the subscription button to be pressed by everyone who has who has dealt with who has dealt with with some of these um, heavily nerfed bosses before in in mythic difficulty okay i'm not gonna let you through with heroic only at least mythic even you know leo vim prototype pantheon that level that being said i'm also as usual available on twitter around this side and on patreon for supporting me even more somewhere around this side which will give you access to my discord channel it has plenty of feats and secrets for you to explore not really but anyways if you do the support would be appreciated this being said it's time to leave because it's getting quite hot in front of these lights thank you guys again for watching see you guys soon and in the meantime no but for real though ha, I, had, I had to change my hair i had to change my hair to get some shorter bangs so they don't go in the way as much as before so far i like it kind of it's not that it's not as annoying as before